Hello friends, welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Professor S.P. Singh from Faculty of Management Studies, Gurukul Kangri University, Haridwar. Today, we are going to study Module 18 on Training and Development. Friends, after going through this module, you will be able to understand the concepts of training and development. To learn distinction between training and development. To comprehend the inputs in training and development. To understand the purposes of training and development. To know the process of training. To learn the training methods and techniques. Almost every organization requires well-trained and experienced employees to perform the activities in order to accomplish the organizational goals. Training is necessary to enhance the skills, versatility and adaptability of employees in a society characterized by rapid changes. Employee training and development are not merely a desirable activity, but also an activity that an organization must commit resources to if it is to maintain a viable and knowledgeable workforce. Training and development is defined as any effort to improve present or potential employee performance by increasing an employee's ability to perform through learning usually by transforming the employee's attitude or increasing his or her skills and knowledge. Training is referred to as teaching specific skills and behavior usually reserved for people in order to bring up performing level in specific skills almost always behavioral as distinct from conceptual or intellectual development in contrast is thought to be more general than training and more oriented to individual needs in addition to organizational needs and most often aimed at management people. Training is meant for operatives and development is meant for managers. Training tries to improve a job related skill whereas development improves the entire personality of an individual. Training is a one shot deal whereas development is an ongoing continuous process. The scope of training is individual employees whereas the scope of development is on the entire work group or the organization. Training is mostly the result of initiatives, management take. Development is mostly the result of internal motivation. Training is a reactive process, whereas development is a proactive process. Development is future-oriented training, focusing on personal growth of the employee. Without skills, the operator will not be able to function. Then the worker also needs motor skills. Motor skills involve performance of a specific physical activities and involve learning in response to external 
and internal stimuli in addition to basic and motor skills employees at supervisory and executive level need interpersonal skills to understand themselves and other better and act accordingly listening persuading and showing an understanding of others feelings are examples of interpersonal skills the aim of education is to impart theoretical concepts and develop a sense of reasoning and judgment hr managers well understand that any training and development program must contain an element of education development is less skill oriented but emphasizes on knowledge knowledge about business environment management principles and techniques human relations specific industry analysis are useful for better management of a company a training and development must also contain an element of ethical orientation there is no debate about the fact that ethics are largely ignored in businesses unethical practices are prevalent in marketing finance and production function in any organization attitudes are feelings and beliefs of individuals towards others there are positive attitudes and negative attitudes negative attitudes need be changed into positive attitudes changing negative attitudes is difficult because employees refuse to change nevertheless attitudes must be changed to enhance the commitment of employees to the organization and motivate them for better performance decision making and problem solving skills emphasize on methods and techniques for making organizational decisions and solving work related problems these skills seeks to improve employees abilities to identify structure problems analyze information create alternative solutions and make an optimal decision among several alternatives there are several objectives of training and development it includes to train the employees in the company culture pattern increase quantity and quality of output involving improvement in work methods to prepare the employee for higher positions in the organization to teach the bright but uncontrollable employee in the determination of his goals to train the employee towards better job adjustment and high morale to bring down supervision wastage and accidents development of work habits and methods of work contribute toward a reduction in the accident rate less supervision and low wastage of material the process of training involves certain steps identify the training needs a training program should be established to assist in the solution of specific operational problems 
and improve performance of the training. Identification of training needs must contain three types of analysis. Organizational analysis identifies the training needs of an organization involving an analysis of the organizational structure, objectives of the organization, amount of available human resources, and the future plans, and an understanding of its culture milieu. Operational analysis involves a detailed examination of a job, its elements, various operations, and the conditions under for performance. Man analysis focuses on the individual employee his abilities, skills, and the inputs, job performance requires, or growth of the individual and development in terms of career planning. Man analysis identifies individual employees' training needs. Having identified the needs for training, the next step is to decide who is to be trained, the newcomer or the existing employee or the supervisory staff, some or all of them selected from different departments. The next step requires that the learner remains prepared for learning. This step involves putting the learner at ease so that he does not feel nervous because of the fact that he is on a new job. State the importance and ingredients of the job and its relationship to workflow. Explain the learner reasons why he is being taught. Create interest and encourage questions to find out what the learner already knows about his job or other jobs. Explain the why of the whole job and relate it to some job the worker already knows. Place the learner as close to his normal working position as possible. Familiarize him with the equipment, materials, tools and trade terms. The trainer demonstrates, illustrates, and questions in order to practice the knowledge gained in different operations. The learner is apprised of the sequence of the entire job and the necessity of each step in its performance. For this purpose, the trainer should make use of audiovisual aids and the trainee is asked to repeat the operations. He should also be encouraged to ask questions in order to indicate that he really knows and understands the job. Under this step, the trainee is required to go through the job several times, slowly explaining him each step. Mistakes are rectified, and if necessary, some complicated steps are done for the trainee the first time. The trainee is asked to do the job in a gradual manner, making up a skill and a speed. The time the trainee is confident that he can do the job in a right way, he is put on his own. Then the trainee is put to test, and the effectiveness of a training program evaluated. The evaluation is undertaken with a view to testing the effectiveness of training efforts. 
various training methods have been divided into two categories on the job training and off the job training on the job training include by far the most common methods used for training non managerial employees is on the job training a study indicates that organizations spend 3 to 6 times more on on the job training than on classroom training on the job training places the workers in a real work setting and makes them seem to be instantly productive on the job training methods embrace development through performance on the job where organizational strength and limitations human behavior and technological systems contributes the most programmed instruction is a method where training is given without the intervention of a trainer information is given to the trainee either in a book form or through a teaching machine after reading each block of material the trainee must answer it feedback is given in the form of correct answers after each response the programmed instruction consists of presenting questions facts or problems to the learner allowing the learner to respond giving feedback on the accuracy of his responses the programmed instruction is self paced as the learner can progress through the programs at their own speed material is also structured and self contained offering enough scope for practice however in this method the scope for learning is less as compared to other methods of training costs of preparing books manuals and machinery are also considerably high computer assisted instruction is an extension of the programmed instruction method the computer aided instruction offers the training program can be changed with ease to show technological innovations in the equipment relating to which the employee is learning this method is more flexible in that trainees can usually use the computer almost any time they want and get training whenever they prefer apprenticeship training is an extension of on the job training with this method individuals entering industry particularly in the skilled occupation are given detailed instruction and experience in both practical and theoretical aspects of the work the programs involve cooperation among organizations labor unions industry and the government a simulation is a technique that duplicates as nearly as possible the actual conditions encountered on the job an obvious example is training employees for operating highly technical and expensive equipment the simulation stresses realism in equipment and its operation at minimum cost and maximum safety 
the more widely held simulation exercises are case study role playing and vestibule training the case method is based upon the belief that managerial competence can best be acquired through the study deliberation and discussion of concrete cases the case is an actual situation written for discussion purposes analysis would need problem identification situation analysis and the investigation of its causes a problem could have several solutions and each of these alternatives and their implication needs to be examined the role play method requires learners to play roles in a specific situation providing an insight and an understanding of the requirements of the assigned role role play focuses on emotional issues rather than actual ones the essence of the role playing is to create a realistic situation and then have the trainees assume the part of specific personalities in the situation the consequence is a better understanding among individuals role playing helps promote interpersonal relations and attitudinal change vestibule training uses equipment that closely resembles the actual ones used on the job taking place away from the work environment a special area is set aside from the main production area equipped with tools and equipments as in the production area then the trainee learns under simulated conditions without disturbing actual production the vestibule training relieves the employee from the pressure of having to produce while learning the focus is on learning skills the job requires the lecture approach is well adapted to conveying specific information rules procedures or methods the use of audio visuals or demonstration can often make a formal classroom presentation more interesting while increasing retention and offering a means for clarifying more complex issues the lecture method suffers from possible lack of feedback and lack of active involvement of the trainees in the conference method the participating persons discuss points of common interest to each other it emphasizes on small group discussions on organized subject matter and on the active participation of the members the ideas conferees contribute build up for facilitating learning this method is ideally suited for the purpose of analyzing problems and issues and examining them from different view points group discussion is an established method for training it is conducted in several ways one or more trainees prepare a paper on a subject selected in consultation with the person in charge of the discussion provide the basis for group discussion the trainees read their papers followed by a critical discussion the contents of the papers are summarized by the chairman of the seminar and the discussions which follow their reading 
the person in control of the group discussion distributes the study material beforehand. The seminar make comparison of the reactions of trainees, encourages discussion, identifies the general trends and leads the participants to certain conclusions. Friends, in this module you have studied the concept of training and development, distinction between training and development, the inputs, the purposes of training, the process, methods and techniques of training. Thanks for visiting the EPG Patshala.